another day of my hair looking really bad in a video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing my September wrap up. I read 24 books in September, which I think has been my best reading month so far. I just wanna apologize in advance for the weird filming location. I'm in my hallway, it's raining out, and so my room is super dark, and I'm sure you can hear rain in the background. Um, it is what it is. But I'm gonna go through the books I read, starting from the lowest star rating up to the highest star rating. Um, I had a really good reading month. You know, I read some of my favorite books of the year this month, and I also read some not great books of the year. Also, my camera battery is dying. First, I have two, two star books to talk about. The first one I don't own. I don't own a lot of these. Some of them I read on Kindle Unlimited. Some of them I only had through Scribd or solely audiobook. So some of them I don't have to hold up, but I do have a decent chunk to hold up. But the first one is Hush Hush by Becca Fitzpatrick. I wish I had a good excuse as to why I wanted to read this book. I think it's just because I saw someone talking about it and I realized this is a series that I never continued reading on when I was in high school. It's a paranormal fantasy angel story with our intrepid narrator Nina who ends up getting partnered up with a new kid Patch who is dark and mysterious. Um, I this I mean it gave it a two stars it should speak for itself. The first three quarters of this book was really bad but it was at least entertaining and then the last quarter of this book like the culmination of kind of everything was just bad. It wasn't entertaining. It wasn't fun to read. I had a slog through the last like two hours of this audiobook. It was horrible. Um, the, I don't know if this book aged really well in the era of kind of current young adult literature versus what it was you know 10 years ago or whenever this book came out but I don't know. It was okay. I kind of want to continue on with the series but they don't have the other books in my library and Scribd doesn't have them and I refuse to pay $20 for the audiobooks off Audible. So maybe not, but it was an okay read. The second two-star book I have is called Unsweetened. It's a poetry collection by Jessica Thibault. I believe I, I might be saying that wrong, but I gave it two stars and I feel bad because I've it's a kind of that modern poetry. I read a decent amount of it this month. I think I read three collections of poetry this month and reading it you can tell that it's something that's really important to her. I unfortunately just didn't connect with a lot of the poetry um, and I felt a lot of it was kind of disjointed. I didn't like this poetry collection that most poetry collections in this kind of modern Instagram-esque poetry is pretty short. You can read them in like one sitting. This took me like a week and a half to read and I just never really enjoyed it. Some of the po- I tend to enjoy the modern poetry in like shorter format and I felt like so much of it was really long and felt a little clunky but again it's it's kind of just like what you connect with versus what you don't connect with with poetry and unfortunately I just didn't enjoy this one that much. The next books I have are three star books the first one being The Lost Sisters by Holly Black. This is the novella 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 that comes between The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King by Holly Black. It's supposed to kind of explain why Taryn did what she did and what was going through her head during The Cruel Prince. It was just okay. I think maybe it's just because I just don't like Taryn. She's kind of an awful sister. Um, she gave a lot of her reasonings as to why she did what she did in the first book and I did read both The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King this month and I'll talk about them in a little bit but I just have a hard time connecting with her as a character. I have a hard time understanding her motives and her reasoning behind why she did what she did and why she like went behind her sister's back and all the things that ended up happening between them. I don't know. You know, it's still nice writing. It's told in a letter format, which I thought was interesting. And I'm not mad that I read it. It was super short. I think the audiobook was like an hour long. So it took me like half an hour to listen to. But overall, it was okay. I think if you're not in love with the series, you can easily skip it. I don't know if I gained anything that I would have otherwise really wanted if I hadn't read it, but the next three star read I had is 2AM Thoughts. This was another Kindle Unlimited poetry collection. This was by Mackenzie Campbell and I liked this one more than Unsweetened, but I still wasn't absolutely in love with it. Um, this, I don't even know if you can describe it as poetry. It's kind of what the title says. It's a collection of random 
kind of mismatched thoughts. A lot of them center around a relationship. It was fun. I liked the thoughts that were like one or two sentences. Again, I feel like the ones that were super long, sometimes you'd have ones that were like a full page on the phone. Those I never really loved all that much, but I definitely connected with this more than Unsweetened, but it still wasn't my favorite. My dog is joining me. You can't see her because she's too short. Next, we're going to be going on to my four star reads. And I think all of the books that I've owned, I haven't got to hold up any because all the books that I own were books that were four or five star reads. But for four star reads, the first one I'll talk about is um, Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. I ended up rereading a lot of books this month and this was one of them. This was my most recent read. I just finished this yesterday, so the last day of September. But this is the first book in the Infernal Devices series by Cassandra Clare, uh, kind of the prequel series to the Mortal Instruments. Um, I've been wanting to read the Shadowhunter books. I read the original Mortal Instrument trilogy and I read most of the Infernal Devices trilogy. I never finished Clockwork Princess, but, but I like this. Um, I think I do prefer this series over the Mortal Instruments series, but it's been so long since I've read the Mortal Instruments series and you can definitely tell the Mortal, Mortal Instrument series, from what I remember, you could definitely tell it's her early writing. Cassandra Clare is definitely one of those people that you can see the improvement in her writing and her earlier works versus her later works. I took off a star because in this current age where a lot of people tell you that you can only read, you can read just this trilogy and go on and read The Dark Artifices and skip the Mortal Instrument series. I don't know if this book has enough world building and enough explanation of the magic system in it to feel like it can be fully fleshed out. I have a decent understanding of it because I have read a lot of the books in the series. Um, so for me, it wasn't a hindrance, but I don't know if someone going in completely blind to the series would be super adequate to like handle everything that's happening because I don't know if they'd have a full grasp on the world and the magic and all the different creatures that are happening. Um, but overall, it's a fun read. It's a good angsty kind of historical fantasy, which is like one of my favorite uh, subgenres of fantasy, kind of historical fantasy. And I'm really excited to continue on with the trilogy. I'm hoping to finish this trilogy and start Mortal Instruments, Mortal Instruments in October. So we'll see how that goes. The next three books I'll talk about are the second, third, and fourth book in the Wayward Children series. I only own the second and the third. Um, Down Amongst the Sticks and Bones and Beneath the Sugar Sky. These are by Shauna McGuire. I also read, I can never remember, In An Absent Dream. The fourth book is called In An Absent Dream. And these are companion novels in the Wayward Children series. It's essentially portal worlds where the first book was a school where children would come back after their portal adventures and have to reacclimate to normal society. And the subsequent books are kind of telling the stories of their portal worlds. Down Amongst the Sticks and Bones I gave a four star. I felt like I liked it. I think it was a hindrance for me because Jack and Jill weren't my favorite characters and there wasn't a huge plot. It was mostly a character study on these two characters and how their upbringings and then their subsequent adventures into the portal worlds kind of shaped them as individuals and I think maybe if you liked Jack and Jill a lot more than I did you would have enjoyed this a lot more but overall I gave it a four star so I still quite enjoyed it. And then I gave Beneath the Sugar Sky and also In an Absent Dream both five stars, but I think In an Absent Dream might be my favorite. In an Absent Dream follows Lundy in a goblin market style world. Truth time, no idea what a goblin market was before I still got to this book. And I still don't really know what a goblin market is, but it's essentially you have to be really careful about trades. You have to be really careful about bargains and debts that you have. Um, Lundy's world was unique because you can come and go freely whereas the other books it was kind of once you left you were up to the whims of the world if they were going to let you back in or not. I also really loved this one because we this book because we returned back to the way we're children series original school um, and so we got to see a lot of my favorite characters again which I was really happy to see but Overall, I love this series. They're super fast reads. Um, Shauna McGuire actually narrates the second one, which was really good. But I love these. They read like fairy tales. Like you're reading them and it feels like someone is reading you a fairy tale, which I is probably my favorite part of these series. And I'm really excited to see where these go. I would love like 100 books in this series. And considering the premise, they can, she, Shauna McGuire can write as many books as she wants, I honestly think. Um, the next book that I'll mention, because um, I don't think I own any other four star books, the rest of the books I own are five star books, um, is the last poetry collection I read. That was I Saw You as a Flower by Ellen Everett. I gave some four stars and I 
really enjoyed this one the poetry was a lot shorter so it was a lot easier to consume i felt like i connected with so many of these poems i didn't connect with all of them and i didn't love all of them but the vast majority of them i really loved i loved the imagery and i just like felt myself like getting in my feels a little bit with this one it was a good read. I'm really happy that I've been kind of expanding my little feelers into the kind of poetry collections on Kindle Unlimited because I'm bad at reading on my phone, but I like reading on my phone. I like the idea of reading on my phone, but I'm really bad at keeping up with reading on my phone. So I like the idea of poetry collections. I'm in the middle of one now, so I'll have to see how the rest of them go. The next two books I'll talk about are Tunnel of Bones and City of Ghosts. I've said those opposite. City of Ghosts is the first one, Tunnel Bones is the second one. This is the middle grade series by V.E. Schwab. It follows our main character Cassie, whose parents are ghost hunters. They have a paranormal TV show they're going to start filming. And coincidentally, Cassie is able to see ghosts. Her best friend is a ghost. Um, she is able to, to walk into the Vale, which is like the ghost world. And in the first book, they travel to Glasgow. And in the second book, they travel to Paris. And in each one, she kind of ends up having her own paranormal adventures um, while they're, her parents, none the wiser, are filming her TV shows. I really enjoyed these. They're super cute. I think this is the first middle grade series I've read as an adult. So it was kind of an interesting experience. Some of the qualms that I had, I think I wouldn't have if I was the target audience. Like I felt like Cassie was kind of incredibly naive about odd things. Like the fact that she didn't know that chips were french fries if she was overseas. Like she's never heard the phrase fish and chips before. And the girl's like 11, which was the oddest thing. And it was like, sometimes she just got a little annoying, but I think it's just because she's like an 11 year old girl and there's like caveats that come with that. But overall, I really enjoyed it. I'm really excited to see what the next book looks like. And yeah. The next four star book I read was the first book in the Remnant Chronicles. This was The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. Um, I really liked this. I gave it a four stars. It follows our main character Leah who is supposed to be married off to this prince and ends up running away in order to avoid that fate. She ends up kind of in this little seaside town just becoming a barmaid essentially and living her life and little does she know that both the prince and an assassin have been sent after her. One in order to try and win her hand back in marriage and one in order to kill her. Um, I really liked it. Uh, I wasn't a fan of the pacing in the last quarter. Um, but I loved like the first three quarters of this was her just like living her life in this little town and like being this like waitress in the bar um, and getting to see her interactions with these different peoples in the town. It's kind of a love triangle situation at one point which was kind of interesting. There's kind of a twist at one point that I didn't see coming. It was good. I'm especially after the ending I'm excited to see where it goes. You know. The next book I read, I gave it a four stars on Goodreads, but retroactively I think it's like a 3.5. It is Spindlefire by Lexa Hillier. It's essentially a story about these two sisters who are, they're not sisters. I don't know, they're not like actually sisters. One is the bastard daughter of a dead king who is blind because of a fairy tithe and one is the uh, crown princess who is supposed to be married off to a prince who is mute and also doesn't have like the sense of touch like she doesn't feel pain and one day they get into some nonsense and the bastard daughter who is blind is supposed to be shipped off to join a nun convent she ends up running away and then the other sister chases after her in order to find her and then she gets kind of mixed up in a fairy world um this is a book that has fairies in it but they definitely don't play as large of a role as you think it would um, I enjoyed a lot of the elements of this. I liked the relationships between the characters. I really liked the two main narrators. Uh, my main issue is I feel like so much happened that we never got to delve very deep into. It felt like everything remained very surface level, which was my main complaint. I would have loved a little bit more of like the meat and bones of this world and the magic and the history and really delving deep. I felt like we would follow the storyline of one sister and then we would cut to the other storyline of another sister. And then we would go back to the main storyline, another storyline of the other sister. And like there'd be a big jump and like things would have happened that we never really got a good explanation for. But overall I enjoyed it. I do want to continue on with the series. So we'll see. And then the last four star books I'm going to talk about is the Veronica Speedwell series. I read the first three books in this series. It's A Curious Beginning, A Perilous Undertaking, and A Treacherous Curse. These follow our main narr narrator, Veronica Speedwell, who in the first book, her aunt dies and she's kind of on her own. She's a lepidopterist, so she studies butterflies and she has a plan to kind of go off 
and explore the rest explore the world continue her adventures and capturing butterflies but she kind of ends up getting mixed up into kind of a murder mystery investigation and she also gets mixed up with this man named stoker um throughout the whole series each book kind of follows a different murder mystery that her and stoker end up kind of getting wrapped up in trying to solve okay so there might be a slight change in angle my camera battery died it's still dying who's to say what's gonna happen um and i don't know what i was last talking about i think i was last talking about veronica speedwell <laughs> i think i was last talking about veronica speedwell um but yeah, I love these. I don't really read them for the mysteries. The mysteries are kind of here or there for me. I mostly read it for the relationship between Veronica and Stoker. It's lovely. I love it. Um, I gave four stars to all the books, mostly because, again, the mystery isn't always my favorite. And I'm in the middle of the fourth one right now. So I'm excited to see where it goes. So we're on to my five-star reads, which I had a lot of five-star reads. I read a lot of books I really love this month. I want to talk about some rereads first, and then I'll get into some of the newer stuff I read. Um, for rereads, I did reread both The Court of Mist and Fury and A Court of Thorns and Roses. This is the first, this is the second by Sarah J. Mass. I don't know what super propelled me into reading this. I think I saw someone I follow on Instagram was like rereading this, reading the series for the first time and I was like, I haven't read the series in two years and I really want to read it. I love these so much. I love the characters so much. There were times where I was reading this and I would literally like crying and like tearing up because we got introduced to so many characters that I adore in this book for the first time and getting to see them again and getting to kind of interact with them again was really lovely. I will say after reading the rest of the series, reading, rereading A Court of Thorns and Roses, it's hard to enjoy it again after knowing kind of what happens. And I was talking to my friend who reads the series like once a year, it's one of her favorite series. And I was like, so I was rereading A Court of Thorns and Roses, right? And she goes, oh, it's awful, isn't it? And I was like, yes, because I don't know. It's hard to say without spoiling things, but enjoying it, like it's hard to enjoy it as much as the first time I did, which is kind of sad, but I still like it. Um, I still ended up giving it five stars because I loved being able to pick up on a lot of little, little different nuances that I didn't get to pick up on the first time I read it, but... I'm excited to finish off the series. And then another reread was I reread The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I read this for the first time last year, last summer, I think, and I really liked it and I gave it five stars, but I wanted to reread it so I can go on and read The Wicked King, which I did. As I said before, I did read The Wicked King. Um, and I was nervous that I wouldn't enjoy this as much as the first time I did because I have read so much this year that I've loved and I was like but what if this doesn't hold up to the standard of some of the other five star books I've read. Um, luckily it does. I love this. I was obsessed with this. I finished the audiobook and I immediately wanted to go on to the second one but my second book audiobook wasn't going to come in for like a day or two and I like couldn't handle myself. I like didn't know what to do and so I ended up reading like half of this physically and then finishing it up in audiobook. I love this so much. I love fairy books so much. I think that also kind of contributed to why after I finished these, I went on and read the Court of Thorns and Roses series. Cruel Prince, if you don't know what it is, follows uh, our main character, Jude, who is a twin. Um, and when she's young, her mother and father are murdered by um, a fairy and are taken into the fairy realm where they are essentially raised in the fairy realm um, and mistreated incredibly because they are mortals and all Jude wants to do is kind of really prove herself, prove that she belongs here and join like the night guard essentially. It's like a, a soldier or like a knight. I don't remember the name for it obviously. She ends up kind of getting tied up into this like spying kind of thing and her and her interactions with some of the other fairies. It was so good. I'm so excited for Queen of Nothing. I've already ordered like Illumicrate has like a limited edition of the Cruel Prince that I ordered. I ordered the Owl Crate Queen of Nothing box. I'm really excited. It's gonna be so good. So the next two books I read in September were God's Grave and Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff. I started God's Grave earlier this year and I ended up pausing it because I wanted to finish up closer to the release of Dark Dawn, which I obviously did. I don't know how to explain my feelings for this series. I love it so much. It genuinely might be my favorite series of all time. Oh, oh God. Oh, he's like really big now. Um, but it really honestly is my favorite series of all time. The first book, Never Night Follows, our main character, Mia, who 
in order to avenge the ruination of her family, essentially joins this red church in order to become an assassin. Oliver, Oliver, you're not allowed in my bedroom. Um, it's essentially an assassin school training book in the first one and the second book kind of continues on from there. I loved this series so much. I finished the third and I immediately wanted to reread the series. I'm gonna put it off for a little bit, but I'm definitely gonna be rereading it. The ending of Dark Dawn, I don't know if a lot of people are gonna love it, but I was so happy with how this ended. I loved it. I don't know if it's the ending a lot of people were expecting, but honestly, it's the ending we deserved. I know it's not for everyone. I know the writing is incredibly flowery. I know it's told in, half of it is like told in footnotes, but I did the audiobooks for these, um, which I think was really the smartest choice. The audiobook narrator is fantastic and the footnotes are really integrated really nicely. So I think if you're, you've tried it and it's been really daunting for you, if you didn't, really vibe with the writing or the, the footnote style, I think the audiobook is a really good choice if you're still intrigued by the plot. Next, I read Serpent and Dove. This is by Shelby Maharim. Maharim? Maharim? I don't know. Um, this is a hate to love fantasy romance with witches where a witch and a witch hunter have to get married. This was fantastic. I'm so excited for the second one. So good the banter is so fantastic can you tell my battery died again but i really enjoyed it banter a plus plot a plus the cliffhanger a plus i'm really excited to see where it goes honestly one of my favorite series starters i've read this year next i read a conjuring of light by ve schwab i accidentally grabbed the second book this is not the third book but this is what the series is um, so I can't say much about it because it is the third book in the series. It follows, the series itself follows Cal, who's able to travel between Londons and kind of smuggles items between Londons and then he ends up getting wrapped up with this person from Grey London, which is the magic less London, um, in order to return this very dangerous object to Black London, which is kind of a London that's been poisoned and killed by magic. Uh, really love it. I gave the first book four stars. I gave the second and third book five stars. I love the characters. I cried at the end of A Conjuring of Light. It was so good. I loved it. The second last book I have to talk about is Emergency Contact. This is by Mary H.K. Choi. This is the only contemporary book I read this month and it's also the first contemporary book I've read since June. This is also maybe my favorite contemporary book I've read of the year. This follows our two main characters, Penny and Sam, who essentially forge a relationship over text. They end up through a series of odd events exchanging phone numbers. It's about them forging a relationship over text message and being really nervous to kind of bring this relationship into the real world because what if it's not as good as it was on text? I loved this so much. I felt like Mary H.K. Choi did a really good job of depicting people in their early 20s, late teens, early 20s really accurately. I loved the dialogue. I feel like sometimes with young adult novels, the way that authors depict teens and kind of early 20 somethings texting is always really awkward. And I felt here, it was incredibly accurate to how I text my friends. Um, but I loved this. I'm really excited to read her newest novel, Permanent Record, because it also follows a similar like age range so i'm intrigued to see how it goes but i loved this so much it was so much fun and i read it like super fast and the last book i have to talk about i forgot to grab so i don't have it hold up but that is capturing the devil by carrie maniscalco this is the last book in the stock and drop the ripper series i ended up giving this like 4.5 out of 5 five stars i wasn't a fan of the third book in the series, the Houdini one. I originally gave it two stars. I've been thinking about bringing it up to three because I felt like a lot of the things I had really deep issues with, with the third book, were kind of addressed in the fourth book. Not in a way that makes me forgive a lot of the issues that I had with the third book, but in a way that made me slightly less angry at it. Um, but I really liked this. This one follows um, H. H. Holmes, which has always been a really fascinating serial killer murder case for me. I felt like the first half was kind of slow because it focused really heavily on the relationship and the mystery really didn't start until the second half, but overall it was still a fun read. Still 4.5 out of 5. I'm still really happy I read the series and I love a good, like, I love that time period, that like late 1800s Victorian England, so it was a good solid read. But that is everything, I hope. Chances are I forgot something. I know I forgot something in my last like my August wrap up, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you all in my next video. Bye. Let me fucking hold up some books, yo. Ooh. We done. <laughs>